Hello. Hello. How are you? Nope. Hello. Hello. Is heat wave over in San Francisco? Uh, you're asking if the heat wave's over? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think so. Like, it was nasty hot on uh, Monday. I think uh, yesterday was a little better, and so far this morning is nice. For my definition of nice. Yeah, it's back to normal now. All right, um, agenda's empty. So how do we want to use this time? Uh, do we want to go through uh, 318 milestone? I thought you wanted to work, work on the, uh, talk about the design doc, Jay. Oh, yeah. Uh, but I think Max already in the Slack responded, so I just didn't okay. uh, bring the uh, bring it up. But yeah, we can we can talk about this end of. I updated and made the changes uh, uh, that we discussed a couple of weeks ago, Max. Uh, changes to the uh, PubSub uh... interface, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, sorry, I'll, I'll have to take a look. You, you said you, you updated your, your doc for that? Yeah. Am I, am I audible or is it like mumbling my voice? No, no it's okay. Uh, go ahead and read it. I, I was just saying it's good. Okay. Yeah, I'm just talking. Yes. Okay, so uh, for Rita and Sartash, if you guys want me to like walk through the changes that we discussed, I'm more than happy to do so, or you guys can review as well. What do you guys want? Uh, I unfortunately I didn't have time to do look at this doc yet. Um... Uh, either way is fine. Like wh whatever you think is easier. Okay, so I, uh, let's do this. I can walk through the changes, like older versus new, and uh, if, if there are any concerns, we can discuss. Uh, yeah, I mean, but since I haven't reviewed the doc yet, like any contacts you can provide will be great. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, can you guys see my screen? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Yeah, so uh, this is what the current interface is, where in each driver we require a constructor function to be there, and then each driver implements 
uh, publish, close connection, and update connection. Uh, so, and additionally, we pass down uh, with, uh, the name of the connection and and the uh, topic that we want to use for publishing violations through this flag, right? Uh, so major difference in the new design is that now we are adding constructor as a part of the interface itself rather than um, the individual constructor that we required uh, for the driver. So uh, all of this is now part of the interface. Uh, that's one change. Another change is earlier system used to uh, maintain each and every connection individually, regardless of its kind. Now that uh, responsibility is shifted in the driver itself. So each driver is supposed to uh, maintain each of their own connections uh, and through through map or whatever. Uh, so that's that's another change. And in doing so, earlier we didn't need to pass down the name of the connection to the driver. Uh, as you can see here, like the publish only calls in with topic, data, you know, the message and, and context and uh, vice versa, right? Like it, system handles which, which connection to use for publish, which connection to close and which connection is needed. Uh, to be updated but now with that delegation passed to uh, drivers uh, system will essentially pass down the connection and uh, the connection and uh, the yeah. topic name for relative uh, one tweak i'm seeing here uh if you'll notice in this proposed generic interface uh the use of the word data uh is being used i think in two different ways here um the 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 first way under publish i think makes sense because it's the data you're publishing you have no idea like the significance of that data so a super generic term like data makes sense i'm guessing for update and create yeah 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 cool that's all Yeah, and uh, we can we can go through naming things. And sorry, I, I couldn't see the screen, so I didn't know you raised your hand. Um, sure. uh, yeah, for naming, we can we can we, we should use this opportunity to generalize the terms. Like, do you want to call it driver? Do you want to call it provider? And and define terminologies as well. So uh, briefly, I uh, listed important keywords, but going forward, like. Well, in, in the last uh, design, uh, the last round of discussions, me and Max were getting confused about what should we call things and then uh, kind of was a little mess. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, so uh, from going this point onwards, so this these are the ma uh, major changes. And then uh, I've listed a simple driver example. Uh, and that's... Uh, very rudimentary uh, example where it just walks through how publish can be implemented, uh, how close can be implemented, how how update can be implemented, and how create can be implemented. And as we already discussed, right, like there are three aspects here. One is like gatekeeper code, one is system, the pub subsystem, and one is uh, the driver, the end drive uh, endpoint. Uh, and basically, the controller uh, or, or gate uh, gatekeeper is responsible for uh, calling to the system and passing the data and whatever that is passed through object and right now a config map. Then the system basically hides the driver from gatekeeper code and is responsible for uh, figuring out appropriate driver to call and then pass down the same data that was passed from, that was received from gatekeeper to driver and driver manages its own uh, thing, uh, the connections and whatnot. Yeah, so that's basically the architecture or flow of information that we are going for.
that's about it does this make sense yeah so you're removing the constructor i guess sounds like yeah yeah constructor is now removed and is as a part of like it's part of the interface itself gotcha So in uh, Max, this was one of the comment that I put. Where did it go? Oh, wait, I lost what? Yeah, so um, the gist of it was that since we, uh, like since the system doesn't know now which connection belongs to which driver in publish essentially, uh, yeah, this, that, yeah, in publish essentially uh, we don't know what driver to call for right like uh, what drivers publish should be called so one way to do this is to maintain an internal map in the system itself to figure out based on a uh, connection name that uh, this connection belongs to this driver and so that we only call that publish instead of you know uh, calling publish for every driver and then let driver handle uh, the the situation where the connection doesn't exist for the driver. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. That's right. more of a global global list of connections instead of like per driver. Yeah. So the responsibility of handling the connections should be under driver, but uh, system also should be aware of. Uh, which drive how many how many connections are open right now and each connection belongs to what driver basically which implies that connection name is unique yeah or whatever identifier we decide on but something similar to that should be there in system yeah yeah i'm trying to think of corner cases i guess But, uh, and this will require the existing stuff to move over. Is that right? Uh, some of the, yeah. Uh, so for, for Dapper driver, uh, the constructor will, will need to like include it as a part of interface. Some, some of the things in driver would change and then some of the things in system would also change. And yeah, for me, I think I mentioned this before, I think the biggest impact is on how this stuff is configured, right? Like, given that connection name must be unique, Yeah. how do we enforce that? Um, and I think I mentioned there, there are some easy ways we could do that if we're comfortable leaning into Kubernetes conventions, right? If we use cluster scoped resources or we constrict our config resources to being in a particular namespace, relying on the object name will guarantee uniqueness, right? Because Kate's guarantees group kind namespace name to be a unique key per cluster. Otherwise, we'll we'll need to design a system to handle conflicts. So that that brings in the question, right? Like when we implement the CRD for to replace config maps, essentially, do we want it to be cluster scoped or do we want to want it to be namespace scoped? And if it is namespace scope, should it be locked to a single namespace, right? Because we yeah. have done this before where we just like force people to use say a uh, gatekeeper system or whatever. But under both of this uh, consideration, we are relying on the name of the resource. On both of these considerations. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's well, that it's the other way around, right? In order to be able to rely on the name of the resource, we, we need to have either cluster scoped or unique namespace. Uh, we can still 
you know, <laughs> uh, do cluster scoped or unique namespace and not rely on resource name. It's just, yeah. that's a little silly at that point. Um, Cause we could get uniqueness for free. Um, the other thing I would point out about the cluster scope or namespace thing or the possibility of clobbering is security and isolation, right? If you allow the config resource to be defined in multiple namespaces, uh, if you have a malicious configurator, they could purposefully overlap with a known pub sub queue name uh, and use that to maybe cause the system to not publish violations to a place where they want to avoid violations being published. Um, you know, I'm, I'm inferring here that we're still getting the name from the config, which it, it, even if it's not, you know, equal to the metadata.name, which I think is reasonable. Current, so currently, when we are relying on config map, we are already reconciling config map in gatekeeper systems namespace. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. These are not, this is not like, um, I'm not saying, oh, this is revolutionary, right? Yeah. Uh, or, or this, this raises the bar of difficulty or anything like that. I'm just sussing out what the implications of, like decisions are right like what the what the shape of the problem is so that we know kind of what our concerns are and what our fixed points are in the design right because once you know your fixed points then there's fewer options and you're you're more free to like choose between the stuff that has to happen rather than making like random choices and then being disappointed later when you realize that it's, oh shoot this is insecure or, or whatever it is yeah yeah i, I mean i'm totally fine with cluster scoped or or namespace scoped i would maybe tend toward namespace scoped weird as it sounds just because of delegation right like i think kubernetes tendency is kind of favoring giving teams namespaces and that being the rbac granularity though so, i don't think kind um, is namespace would it be in gatekeeper system namespace That's an interesting question. I mean, that would align with like what we're doing with like the config object. Uh, I could see an argument for people wanting that separate at some point, just because, you know, uh, does that mean that users can also mess with pods in the gatekeeper system namespace, right? Like, I mean, you could, Carve the R backs however you want, so it's it's not that big of a deal. It's just sort of like UX, right? Like, how do people want to R back based off kind, based off namespace? If they do namespace, maybe they're already R backing based off kind to avoid interfering with the pods. Yeah, just put yourself in the organization sysadmin role. What? What's easiest? Yeah, I'm thinking more along the lines of like the actors who would configure this um, are people who are managing the policy stuff. So might be the same same level of permissions. Might. 
I, it might be, it might be a little higher of a permission, right? Because like the people managing constraints and constraint templates, or sorry, it might be a little lower level of permissions. The people managing constraints and constraint templates wouldn't necessarily be the ones managing gatekeepers footprint, right? And so I think the question is, do people who are trusted to write, are people who are trusted to write constraints and constraint templates also trusted with providing the list of arbitrary connections that gatekeeper can make? Or is it that the sysadmin sets up some pre-baked configs and authors of constraints are kind of like, free to choose how it's enforced, but they can't modify the capabilities of the system itself. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I was just thinking sort of like everything else, right? Like in terms of interacting with Gatekeeper. Oh, yeah. actually, yeah. sorry, a uh, counter example to uh, giving authors control, sync sets and the sync config. We purposefully make that a separate permission to avoid someone writing a cache all sync set and then a dump all constraint and getting like super user read on the cluster that way. Yeah, that's a good point because we don't have right now the ability to uh, restrict uh, connection to particular constraint or constraint template, right? Like if I create a constraint, all of the, uh, sorry, I create a connection, all of the violations are published to that connection. So it doesn't relate to, so let's say team A creates one thing, team B creates another thing. Uh, then violations are like uh, team A creates one thing and team B is not doing anything, but still team A will receive the violations of team B. Oh, that creates a different problem. Uh, like, who has access to receive these violations? Um, and since we don't support right now multiple connection also, it makes it difficult. Like, we should follow up with that uh, uh, change to allow more granularity. But as of now, how it stands, I think gatekeeper admin is more in control or should be more in control of how connections are created rather than policy authors. I, I mean, I think I'm convinced that there's going to be at least a few cluster admins who are going to have this opinion, which just, I, I mean, to me, I think we're just looking at a supportable threshold, supportability threshold, right? Like, is it possible for users to do this if they want it, right? Can they segregate, segregate the permissions uh, or are they stuck? Uh, and I don't think we're looking at any, any of these outcomes. I don't think we're looking at any like chance of not being able to segregate the permission, right? Because if nothing else, it will be a unique kind, right? As soon as we stop using config map, right? Uh, Admins are free to define whatever RBAC role they want to for this. Um, From that perspective, it should be like constraint template and constraint. Because if you think about it, they're cluster level today. And as an, as an admin, if I have access to the constraint, I can see the violations, right? So from this perspective, how you are configuring the connections, you should basically be like, how like some God mode uh, where you can define this. Otherwise it's like, 
who has access to that particular namespace would have permission to configure this sounds really odd to me. Again, yeah. assuming it's like there is like our back at the namespace level, right? As opposed to kind. Now, well, I, maybe here's another way of looking at it. Um, is it weird to require a specific namespace if you know you're going to only use one namespace anyway? Are people like just use cluster scoped? Well, I'm just trying to mirror what we have with constraint templates and constraints. Yeah, I, I, and what I was saying, the way I phrased it would mitigate toward using cluster scoped too. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, there's, there's a couple of different things we could mirror, right? The config object or constraint templates and constraints. I'm thinking specifically, um, you know, sync sets are also an option. Um, I forget if sync sets are cluster scoped or not. I think it is. I'm look, let me let me double check. Uh, I, I was just looking at that. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, cluster. Yep. Okay. As, as, which makes I, sense. We don't really have anything named uh, names. names yeah. yeah. Other than the config object, and that's one in alpha. Specific, a gatekeeper system namespace. Yeah, yeah that's also a singleton, right? Like only config. That's right. The object with name config is all, only one that gets that gets reconciled as well. Which is the oddball here. I mean, oh, right now the connection is kind of that, right? Like we only care about the. Uh, uh, one object with a specific name that matches the one that's passed down through flag. As yeah, I mean, that we're, we know we don't want to keep long term, though. Yeah. Um, yeah, and config object, like, there's a reason it was alpha, right? right? Like, that was written before, like, we were kind of like wondering do, will we need to support multiple gatekeepers? Well, we need to support multiple configs. Like config was authored in 2019, I think, before we had users, right? So we we didn't know <laughs> any of these behaviors. So yeah, I I, I don't think config is like fundamentally broken, but I think, um, you know, it's it's also not like a paradigm of informed design, paragon of informed design, excuse me. So then it sounds like we are all leaning towards a cluster scope uh, resource. Works for me. Let's go with that. Unless as you implement, you find, you know, you think of other things. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I did link another design doc on the same one describing how uh, CRD could look like for config resource, but it that's still under the uh, work, so. Yeah, this was some initial thought I had earlier on, uh, and then I updated it a little bit to make it most most recent. So. Okay, sounds like we agree on the design. Then we will use name for identifier for connection and rest of the stuff so yeah if you guys want to take a look at uh, the dog in depth uh, feel free to do so otherwise i can start on implementation okay. whatever can you also add a little section about the migration aspect of the existing what do we call it driver plugin whatever right like i don't yeah. know what that looks like 
and like version compatibility between old providers and gatekeeper as you make this change? I think they're all uh, correct. yeah uh, But you don't have to be compatible. Um, okay. yeah, they are Yeah. linked to gatekeeper. So, Huh? I mean, they are not in different repo or anything, right? It's built with gatekeeper itself. So, No, yeah, but I meant the APIs, right? Like you're you're essentially changing the the contract, right? yeah, but I mean, uh, Sirtesh. Sirtesh's point is, it is alpha. Like, I'm not against, like, advising people how to migrate if anyone relied on the alpha. And I think it should be possible to write just an adapter layer that translates. For the record, I'm not saying it has to be backward compatible. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is it like we should have a section for as a provider, here's the action you need to take. And starting from whatever version of, uh, I almost say Kubernetes, whatever version of Gatekeeper, you should be using the new, the new uh, contract and the old one won't work, right? That, that's all I'm saying. Yeah, and if we wanted to get fancy, you could provide something that swallows the old contract and adapts it to fit the, the new contract. I think that should be possible. Yeah, I think the fact that we're in alpha, it, we can get away from a lot of that. Yeah. I just want to like confirm that the old one, because it's a new contract, the old one wouldn't work anymore, right? So would uh, like sampling, so right now uh, we have one driver upstream, right? Like would the rewrite of the driver fulfilling the new contract be enough for providing an example of, hey, this is the old thing. This is how you are supposed to write new thing. Okay. At some point, we talked about the ability to route things to different queues. I'm not saying we we shove that into to this. I just forget what the state of that conversation wound up being. Do you, do you remember? So we discussed a couple of things, right? Like one is uh, to enhance upon enforcement point design and mention like connection points and whatever there. And then how uh, how audit or webhook or whatever, figure out where, like what connection to use. That was one design. And the another one was the concern where uh, like, what kind of in-depth granular details we want to provide under config resource, like saying that, hey, uh, if this, the uh, basically, where do we want to uh, put the responsibility of navigating uh, the messages to uh, in terms of should the constraint include the name of the connection or should the connection define the name of the constraint that it wants to receive the messages from? I think we landed on constraint for that question. Oh, and there was like semantic routing and we were like, we could like build that later where you could have Yeah. like, there's a billing violation and that invokes what or more sub sub queues or, or whatever we're calling these. Okay. And then there is a there is a question of like is it suitable to like what comes under defining a new channel right like I think let's say uh, a billing is an organization then uh, Cogs is one channel and then uh, like sales is another channel whatever and then if there is a different organization with some different connection can be used okay yeah i think i think we want routing based on both of them connection and a name and the channel right uh well okay connection name and the channel you mean the topic or yeah 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 
sorry topic yeah like ultimately uh, that's where we want to get to right uh wait okay so i i got a little confused because like in the interface you have connection and you have topic and that's part of the publish um uh, method in your interface but what i was just mentioning was like sort of semantic clustering of different connections right so like if your billing department wanted like to publish things in a certain way and your likes uh what would you call it like your compliance department and had different messaging systems you would be able to identify connections by department rather than by connection name which would be separate from topic i'm just like did you did you are we still talking about the same thing or did you change you know we are we are talking about the same thing i was just adding one more layer to it right like let's say uh, there there exist four connections that are responsible for routing messages of billing organization right but now under those four connection there would exist different channels or different topics right so sub organization of billing can can use those different channels to ultimately deliver the messages wherever they want to deliver or is it just adding unnecessary complexity at this point i don't know i mean it's hard to say uh we would we would need to game out the use cases and we would need to um design some way of specifying this um information and 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 see like can it be made dry right um because like with the the current knobs we have just with this uh I don't know what to call it alpha proposal beta proposal with new new interface proposal uh the, with the current knobs basically you're explicitly listing uh connection and topic I'm just going to use the old language uh and that will work right uh, just the and that will hit any use case we're trying to hit it's just a question of is it a pain in the butt right and then you know and that's where you get like the, the sort of layer of interaction of the semantic naming and that way people can like alter their connection configurations like under the hood without needing to update their constraints then when you get to the the notion of topic right is does that mean then that that gets bundled in here but if if people are used to separating out the topic like defining the topic in the violation right or do you do different routing based off of like which topic it is right like different queues subscribed to different topics which is like a little weird because it's like an inversion of the intent of pubsub um yeah i don't know like and it's uh, i it, we don't necessarily need to know i just been thinking through like are we losing anything is there anything we need to that would be put at risk someone was saying something are you guys still talking about whether to put it in constraints or is that what we're talking about or different sorry oh uh, i think we're just thinking about day two problems right like let's say we do this what might we want to do next and do we for me at least i'm thinking do do would we be blocked in any way because of decisions we've made okay um yeah about adding like the channels to the constraints one issue i can foresee is you know if i need to like add a new channel that now i have to touch every constraint that seems like a lot of work. Yeah, and so semantic naming could 
solve that. And you could do that by adding a separate resource that basically says, here's the semantic name and here's the list of connections or alternatively modify the connection config to allow it to self-identify which semantic names it is relevant for. Like either one of those works. But then we were also curious about topic, right? So like we know the pub sub queue, who provides the topic? Is it always the constraints? Uh, or or is it do do we need some kind of um, layer of indirection there? I don't know. I, I'm I'm having a hard time imagining something that would be convenient there and salient that, that you couldn't also do by just adding more semantic names, right? Like if you needed more fine-grained selection of channels, like there's no reason that a channel couldn't be associated with multiple semantic names. Well, I do like, I mean, just brainstorming, could we do have like, what do we call this? The What are we calling this resource? Sorry, I didn't want to butcher the name. I've- We're, we're I've, not calling it PubSub, and are we still calling it PubSub? I've just sort of relegated myself to using the PubSub nouns for this discussion, uh, just because it's easy to remember and it maps on to the granularity that we still have. Where so it's we like, have a name you know, for this new CRD, is that right? Okay, cool. I think I've also been using channel. I've been using yeah. channel and connection interchangeably and then topic, yeah. Um, anyway, for this violations channel thing, right? Like what if, I mean, could we do like a red, like allow something like a regex thing for people to say, I want, I, I want violations for all these constraints, assuming regex is, conclusive enough <laughs> oh no 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 yeah yeah i would um no yeah I, I i would probably do it the other way around where the constraints kind of categorizes itself right and that's what the semantic naming would be about right so i'm like a billing violation i'm a generic violation blah 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 and then the channel uh, or some config that lives next to all the channel configs basically says which categories of constraints go uh, a, a given channel is, is interested in. Uh, that's another way of phrasing the semantic naming design. Um, I think it is, uh, but there, there was this, thought about having just like a universal pub sub, right? That like you could provide a command line argument or something like that. And then all violations get pushed to that pub sub. Is this related to the enforcement action stuff? I think this would be separate from the enforcement action. And I, I'm curious how we feel about that. And it's kind of like the state of the art that we have today, right? Where like any violations, I know for audit at least, get pushed to a specified pub sub queue and there's just no way around it. Um, we... Do we want to keep that behavior? Like it, do, it does have the advantage of if you want to use PubSub, it's very easy to force everyone to use PubSub. Um, hmm. And now I'm thinking, how could that map onto semantic naming? And I'm kind of thinking about that regex thing of is there just an implicit all uh, that that gets omitted, right? Where if you 
subscribe to the all category, you get all violations. Model card, regex. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, because what I don't like about these is these are two resources that can be updated at any point in time. So you can't rely on the stability of one or the other. <laughs> like as soon as you have a regex of the channels, it you know you can add or delete, remove. Same goes with constraints. That's right, it. and that. So uh, well, I wouldn't use regex to be clear. I I think that I would. I think Even there's if you use some kind of naming convention, it could still be updated outside of your view, right? So it's like you're what well, you're saying, like oh, billing or whatever, right? Like that could get removed. That could get some new one could get added. So your your world that it it, it gets changed outside of its life cycle. Here is a suggestion. Like mm -hmm. we can uh, include a list of topics allowed under one connection under config connection config resource itself. Like the resource will define a list of uh, topics that it allow it supports basically. A connection will define that, and then uh, constraint can list those channels. And if there is a match, we push it using the connection. Um, that's a that's a tight tight coupling. I don't think you want it. So, uh, for example, right now connection doesn't define a top. Uh, connection config map doesn't include any channel, right? We would have a list there that let's say I'm using connection A, then connection A can only pub publish on X, Y, and Z channels. I think what. Uh connection and channels have been like synonymous up until this point. What's the difference between a connection and a channel? Let's uh, sorry. So channel is based, by channel. I'm saying topic. So oh, no. let's use connection for an uh, like actual link. And then topic is a queue under the name of the queue under that link. Okay. Um, I think we're getting we're confusing two different use cases now i think we're you know there's the use case of the author of the constraint knows what pub sub queues or at least what classes of pub sub queues they want to go to and we want to give them the freedom to declare that but then we're also looking at this other use case that I, I think Rita brought up, or maybe I kind of implicitly did with the flags, losing the state, but where where the admin actually is like, actually, I want to be able to tap into the data flow of like all violations. And I don't want a constraint author to be able to keep me from doing that. Does is that is that a fair description of the two use cases we're kind of have been looking at? I don't think we uh, discussed the second one. I was always thinking about the first one. If it's the first one, we can trust the constraint author to do the right thing, right? Because it's what they want. Author. Well, no, but the, because it's the constraint author that wants to see the message in that model, right? Like the constraint author is is our user at that point. And the, the idea of the semantic naming is it makes it a little easier for the constraint author and the platform provider to be separate people because the constraint author just says, this is a billing thing. This should go to billing places. And the platform provider gets to define what that means, right? Billing goes to- Where did this requirement come from? Like so far, everything has been all or nothing. Where did the requirement come from that says only certain channels or only certain uh, 
channels will want a subset of the constraints, right? So far, it's all been all or nothing. Well, that was that's part of the multi enforcement point stuff, right? Is there there's a notion that there's there's going to be different parties that have interests in policies for an organization, right? You're going to have your like standards people, right? Like, hey, we require everyone to have an owner name and whatever, right? And you're going to have your like compliance people who are like, hey, so this these are important for PCI DSS. And we really want those messages because, you know, this is important for our compliance and we want to really bug you. We don't really care if you have the owner label. That's not our business. Like, you know, and, you know, maybe internal teams have like uh, infra quality signals that they're looking at, or maybe you're a, um, uh, you, you're renting out your Kubernetes platform, right? And so you you have certain like billing signals. I, yeah, I don't know. Like the the point is that having the ability to have multiple pub subs basically gives the ability to choose the attention set for a given violation, right? So it's not like everyone all the time. Uh, and in that model, the author of the constraint knows that they're interested in those violations, right? So we can trust them to want to correctly configure the constraint. Um, but there's another model, right? Where you have the platform, like whoever's operating gatekeeper is like, I want to be able to observe all constraints or sorry, all violations for all constraints. Cause I want to like gather metrics or every time I roll out, I want to like do an AB test over like the course of a day to make sure the numbers are consistent. Or I want to make sure there's no like messing around where someone puts a deny all constraint in there and violation spike or, or whatever, whatever it is that they're, they're trying to do. Uh, and in that case, those kinds of users, uh, they're not going to want to give constraint authors the freedom to opt out. So that, that's how I came up with these two different use cases sort of born of two different personas. Feels like both of them are competing a little. Uh, not competing necessarily. Whether they're competing depends on us, right? Uh, if we choose a design where we can only satisfy one person, then yes. If we if we choose a design that works for either persona, then they're just different uses of the same system. Oh, and I should also say, because we've moved beyond pub sub, right, another use for this would be log all violations to disk, right? And that's, that's I think, where we're getting into some of this um, force selection, right? Like, must be able to be in scope. We could pop um, this and just do all right right now. I mean, I think the the driver for this is to dump all, right? And not everyone will have the ability to look at the violations on the constraint status. Uh... So the limit. Like, it, the, I think that's the biggest driver as far as I am concerned. Like it's today we have a limit because of the SCD object limit, right? Yeah, I mean, so that's fine. I think then that changes sort of how we would imagine writing this. 
right? Because that would mean if all is our concern, then PubSub, at least for this first iteration, should not be an enforcement action, right? Because having it available as an enforcement action implies that the constraint author has some kind of control over it, which is, it sounds like that's not what you want. Um, and then the question is, well, how is this configured? We can keep it with flags for now. I would probably like keep this in alpha then. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, because probably we want to make things a little bit more flexible than and and it's uh, like how we have a a flag for the audit limit, right? So it's similar to that, but instead of writing to the constraint status, it's relying on this new channel way to, to dump all. To be fair, Go ahead. yeah, to be fair, uh, we'll have both mutually exclusive, right? Like if one is being you, like, let's say if we are using PubSub, we won't stop reporting on constraint status unless the okay. number says zero. Okay. Right. It's mutually exclusive, yes. Yeah, so, but anyway, like, so we're still then sticking, at least for the moment, with a binary all on or all off thing. Yeah. And with a single connection. Yes. That, uh, okay. Like, I don't think that's where we want to wind up before we even take it to beta, but like, I think what we're left with then as far as like artifacts would be refactoring of the interface and refactoring of how this is configured, how the connections are configured to not use config map, keep the flag, and then we're punting what to do about the flag to later. Again, I wanna solve the problem at hand, which is I wanna get all the violations, right? So. Let's solve that and, and then let's open up and then if users start asking for, hey, I want more granular ways to do it, then let's come back to this. I hear that. Uh, we just need to be careful to not only think about the problem at hand, right? Because flag, if, if, if all we cared about was the immediate use case, we may as well ship the flag thing, and that would shoot us in the foot later if we wanted to do something fancier. I just feel like the requirements aren't really that clear. Um, and in a, lot, in a lot of cases, if we don't design it correctly, people can shoot themselves in the foot, I feel like. Because as you said, they're different personas and they're not exactly trying to solve the same problem. Like you said, like pick one over the other. Like I'm not, I'm not sure I, I know enough to pick one or the other. So I don't, I don't think, I think it's a false hood that it, these are an either or. Uh, like I'm fine going slow, uh, but you know, I, I think we've already talked ourselves into a design where both people could be happy. We're not also removing the other option. They, they... Well, right now we are removing in terms of like what we're going to work on uh, in the immediate term enforcement actions from this concern. Right, like the violations in constraints, or we're talking about something else. Sorry, in constraints, right? Like enforcement action for pub sub. But you're giving the constraint owner the ability to opt in and out, which is not what we, which we don't have enough signal to know if that is something we want to allow. Because that in that case, you're picking the persona, right? Remember, we have like two different personas. So depending on. Yeah, like if the. I feel like we've got ourselves confused for no reason. Like this actually is like pretty, as far as I could tell, simple long-term, 
right? Like if we have semantic identification of cues, right? There can be a mandatory all cue that every constraint publishes violations to. And you could subscribe pub sub constraints to the all, whichever, whichever driver connection stuff. So you can subscribe them to this all thing and that gets you your mandatory, right? And then also you can let people specify additional pub sub cues as, as desired, right? Like I'm not saying again, I'm, we can, we could get there slowly, but it, it shouldn't be too weird to achieve something like that. Like it shouldn't look too weird as a config surface. Yeah, let's, again, let's get the alpha thing in and let's get feedback. We're, we're kind of going like in circles right now. <laughs> yeah, I just, just like if we get feedback only for the thing that you're trying to design for, right? That would be a problem, right? Because yeah, if you design for the small thing and it works for the small thing, you have no reason not to ship it based off of that signal, make it GA, but then you've ignored this other thing that maybe people haven't even thought of yet, right? And have precluded that. So. Yeah, I guess I'm looking for sig more signal again, like from what you're saying, like, you know, the different personas, I'm, I don't know if I have enough signals just from the issues and like Slack to know those are valid like requests. Like I just, because we have a lot of other issues that we can work on. I just don't want to spend the cycle on like theoretical things because I, again, I could be wrong, but I'm just off of the top of my head right now. I'm, I don't feel like there's enough signal from existing issues to tell me let's design something for that, especially because it's complex. Like the user experience could be complex and 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 I would much rather keep it simple to solve the problem that we know people need. Does that make sense? I'm not saying it's not valid. I'm just saying I, I would like more signal so that we can spend time to properly design it. As long as we don't ship anything that precludes it, I do not care. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sure. Um, but again, it gets back to your point, like if we ship something, but if we don't get people asking us for the things that you were talking about, it's hard for us to say, well, okay, how long do we want to wait for, for a beta? You know what I mean? Do we, do we want to open an issue with yeah. these ideas and, yeah. and, uh, and see if people that. react to it? Absolutely. Yeah. But like, like, you know, I think Max is correct. Like sometimes people don't know what they don't know. Like it, this is probably the first time we're looking at this, right? Like before this it was very much like you get two options, either look at the logs or <laughs> constrain a status. So you, you don't even know if it's possible to do something like, like uh, more advanced, right? Yeah. So yeah, put put out an issue and then see. Let's see if people are interested. But but again, you get where I'm coming from, right? Like I really don't. I really want to avoid designing something that is really complex when there's not enough people asking. When there's like a clear need that should that deserve a simple yeah. experience. Yeah. What I don't get is honestly the complexity. I get like it one, it shouldn't be. And two, like with regard to like use cases on the record, like I, I'm not clear, like who is asking for pub sub at all, to be honest at the, at the moment. Um, I, oh, I, I agree with it as a feature. I, I, we, we know uh, we have a need for this, right? Again, the, the, this constraint status with the limit of whatever, like, 500 whatever right like it's it's not great right and we're always going to be in scd's limitation 
right? So that has been a problem since the beginning of the, the project. I would like to solve that. So that's a clear, 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 clear goal and clear requirement. So I will, I feel like let's figure, let's, let's have a simple experience around that if possible. And, and I get your point is let's not like lock it down such that we can't add stuff to it. Um, but I don't want to say, hey, in order to get that today, you must add, you know, enforcement action for channel for every one of your constraints. Like to me, that's not a great experience. That's, that's yeah, no, not, nothing of any of what we've talked about would have even suggested that experience. Okay. Literally. Yeah. Sure. But we were talking about enforcement actions, right? Like for pop sub. Yeah. And honestly, I'm glad that we brought up the flag thing then because otherwise we would have just, you know, basically walked into a design that was enforcement action first, which would have ignored that you also wanted this other functionality. Uh, the basically like global publishing. That's right. Yeah, I just want to minimize the work the user has to do on, you know, like a default experience. Okay, all right, I think, I think we beat that horse dead. All right, I think we're over. Um, all right, thank you. Uh, before we go, uh, should I start implementing or should I wait uh, for you and short test to look at it and then? I think I'm good. I mean, this, you thanks for walking through the doc. I, I looked through it. I don't see any big problems. Yeah. I, I already voiced my concerns and things that I think could be problematic, but yeah. Yeah, I, I, I am fine with this. I think we don't have to just implement like any specific d drivers yet. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, the overall design is fine with me. Yeah. And then the pops of integration on the all that stuff, like the existing stuff, that dap or whatever. Um yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh okay. And do I uh, add the migration guide, like example of new trapper driver here or in the doc? What do we want to do? Just a doc. Oh, okay. I just add a add a section. I already added comment just but okay. Yeah. I don't think we need to go fancy and make an adapter or anything like that. I think just like a yeah. So to, hey, if you have a existing thing, here's how to migrate sort of thing. Like best effort, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Thank you.